What's going on HR Army, Justin from HO Plants. Today I have an unboxing actually from a customer. They sent me some rare stem plants. So we're gonna take a look, unbox, and see what's inside. So stay tuned. If you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button and enlisting in the H2O Army. Also hit the bell icon to make sure you join our elite notification squad. All right, so my buddy Austin, who's also a longtime customer, sent me over this care package here. A bunch of stems. I also did pay for these. He uh, he said he had a bunch of rare stuff, and uh, kind of the total added up really quick because he had a bunch of stuff that either A, I really wanted, or B, that I had and lost at some point um, because when we moved into the house almost a year ago, uh, I just didn't, never recovered a bunch of the rare plants that I had at the time because they wound up dying during the, the move. So I just really haven't bought them. Them. and he luckily he had the majority of what I was looking for so that's really good uh, we're gonna get into it and I'll show you what I got one of which is a super rare stem plant so I think you guys are gonna really like that so let's get into the first plant so uh, this is Bacopa Colorado there's many forms of Bacopa. There's Bacopa Monnery, aka Moneywort. There's Bacopa Carolina, which is a broader leaf. And then there's this one, Bacopa Colorada. And what's unique about this, it actually gets really bright pink tips. Although it's gonna be hard to see right now because these obviously are not in an aquarium or under good lighting at the moment. But the tips of these will actually get a vibrant pink. So much so, if I can find it, I will go back and add the picture that I took of my own uh, a couple months ago when I had it before it got eaten by some of the algae eaters that I had in the tank. Or at least I think it was them. So, yeah, really nice Bacopa. It gets these extremely pink leaves at the top. Looks absolutely amazing. It is a, a bit of a harder stem to grow. You do need a decent light and you do need CO2. At least in my experience, I'm sure if you have just a decent light, you could probably get this to grow as well because Bacopa in general isn't too hard, but uh, when you have plants that have different pigments, uh, you could use a little extra light to really bring those out. Next up is Rotala Ini. So what's unique about this stem plant actually is that it has a red stem as you can see and green leaves so it's really awesome stem plant i had this once before but because of the fine leaves i had too many algae eaters in the tank that i was in and they actually wound up nibbling off all the leaves so it didn't grow uh really quite well although i do have one surviving stem of it but the stem is bare and just now sprouting new leaves but this will hopefully give me some new stems to start growing out in the 55 because that's actually where I put the last remaining stem that was doing well. Next up is Macond Rotala Macondra variegated. So typical Rotala Macondra is a really beautiful pink red plant that I absolutely love. Uh, it's stunning. Unfortunately, I just haven't had a use for it in one of my aquascapes yet, but this is variegated. And what's unique about this variegation, obviously, if you look at the leaves here, let me try and get a nice, there you go. You see the veins there? That's the variegation. That's that's why it's called variegated Rotala Macondra because it shows white veins. And it's absolutely like a stunning red stem plant. Does need CO2, does need good lighting, but actually you might be able to grow it under um, medium light without CO2 if you um, if you have regular. But Rotala Macondra variegated probably to keep the variegation is most likely going to need really high light. So, I mean, you might be able to try it. I don't recommend it, but uh, you could give it a go. Uh, this is Rotala Mini Type 4. So this is a really small leaved Rotala. I've had this before also. And you could see here, they're just absolutely delicate, super tiny leaves, but they're they're stunning. Once they once you get a bush of these growing in your aquarium, and he sent quite a bunch. Keep in mind, um, with the Rotala Macondra, he told me he only had one stem, and I was like, send it, I need it. That was actually one of the reasons why I uh, re think um, either he cont contacted me or I contacted him. And you could see here, although I wonder if this is. He might have mixed this. This looks like variegated also. This might have been mixed in. I don't think this is the same. This is this is the Rotella butterfly. I think this is Rotella macondra here. 
uh, variegated. I think he gave me a couple more stems and maybe just mixed them by accident. That's okay. Luckily, I can tell the difference. <laughs> so most of these will be going in the 55 just because I'm having better luck growing these these plants that are more susceptible to being eaten by the algae eaters that I have. So if you didn't know, um, I'm going to do a full video on this, but I did a live stream almost probably a year ago of these really um, stunning algae eaters that I got called Siamese, uh, reticulated Siamese algae eaters, or I'm sorry, reticulated flying foxes, which are a form of the Siamese algae eater. And they're great algae eaters. They eat a ton of hair algae. Um, they'll clean up pretty much any black beard algae, anything like that. But if you have a lot of them, and this is what I learned, if you have a lot of them, and I had uh, nine in a 40 gallon breeder, if you have that many and you're not feeding every single day, they will start chomping down on fine leaved plants. Now keep in mind, I know this because all the other plants in the tank were fine. They're were, they were broader leaf plants. They're really like pronounced leaves. They're not fine leaves. like the Rotala Eni and the Rotala Butterfly Mini. Um, so I know that it was the case. They had to have been eating them because they were really fine leaved. And that's fine, I get it, you know. I don't feed every day, so that would you know, be why they're nibbling at it, looking for food. They're maybe not necessarily eating the plant. They're just nibbling at the leaves for you know to try and find food and scavenging, and maybe picking off the leaves. And you, when you have so many of them, and they do that enough times throughout the day, it eliminates the leaves faster than they could regrow. So getting these stem plants back in is uh, quite nice, but I'm keeping them in my 55, where I only have two of the Siamensis algae eaters in there and they um, they don't seem to annoy the plants as much. So this is Pogo Steven uh, Heidelberg, I think it's called, Heidelberg. Um, it's a, a, just a green stem plant. It's actually a little rare in the hobby. You can't normally find this. Um, and when you do, it's kind of expensive. I forget the price ratio normally, but these will go for, I think, anywhere between like two and six dollars a stem, maybe even slightly more, or at least last time I got them, that's, I think I paid like six to eight dollars last time I got them. So I'm not exactly sure what the going price for, is for it honestly he just threw out a number at me and I was like okay sounds good uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue you're sending me a bunch of plants that I want so I'll take it I don't know if I mentioned it but I'll link Austin's uh, Instagram I don't know if I mentioned Austin he's the one that sent me this uh, so this is Ludwigia Pantanella and I had this, the same thing that happened. It got actually either, it got eaten or it got lost when I moved. I can't remember which one happened here. But these get beautiful orangey tips to them. Uh, they form, they're similar if you know what a coon's tail is the or foxtail that they uh, sell as a plant, that's the name of it. Uh, it's similar to that, it looks very similar, it looks also similar to Ludwigia cuba, uh, but it's, it's a much denser uh, stem and it has a beautiful orange like line that runs through the leaves. So really nice, this is Ludwigia pantanella. And um, this may be up on the website too, because this actually does grow really fast, which is nice. Unfortunately, it either got eaten or I lost it when I moved. I don't remember what exactly happened to this one. Uh, let's get into Rotala Butterfly. So this is another one like the Rotala Mini Macandra, except Rotala Butterfly has even smaller leaves, I do believe that's the difference. Um, and these are... Are these Rotala Butterfly? Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, Rotala Macandra Mini is smaller leaves. These are bigger leaves, but they I think they're uh, a different shade of pink, and there's a lot in here. I'm thinking I'm gonna run out of room for these, so I'm probably gonna have to spread them out between a couple tanks. I'll put a couple in the 55, just so that way um, they don't completely get eaten if they do. Although I moved, I, I should mention that I moved um, the tank that had the nine algae eaters in, I separated, um, I only left three in there and I separated the other six and I put them in other tanks. So now there's not so many in there. And so far, the plants that were being affected by them nibbling at it seem to be bouncing back. There's new growth coming off the stems, but I did lose quite a few plants because they nibbled it down to bare stems and they just never bounced back, or at least they haven't bounced back yet. So the next plant here is Ludwigia Hybrid Red. So I've had this plant before and I don't actually know what happened to this. It all of a sudden started turning gray on me and just it kind of died and I don't know if it was like lack of nutrients lack of co2 or what happened 
But this is um, just a beautiful red stem plant that you can grow in almost any light. It will be more red, obviously, under high light with CO2, but under the... Um, under just a normal light, it should still be able to grow. And it just all of a sudden turned gray for me. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if it was like a fluctuation with CO2 or whatnot, but I did wound up losing the strain that I have. So hopefully this is a much better strain. Um, sometimes with plants, it's much like crops. Uh, you, you, certain crops and certain plants are kept alive because they have uh, a sp like special genes that are expressed in the plant. So I might have just had a bad strain that I wound up getting and it eventually turned gray. I know this has actually happened to quite a f couple people on the Facebook groups anyway, because I've reached out to a couple people and I, I, I've, I've seen similar results with some sometimes uh, that plant. So who knows what it could be, or it could have just been my tank parameters. I don't know. But we got it again, so that's a good thing. So next is Anubis Nana Pinto. I think I've shown you guys this plant before. I had it. We, there was a freak accident. We're going to have to touch on that freak accident one day. Um, what happened with all my Anubis Pinto. But uh, I pretty much am down to like one little rhizome left. And I don't know if it's going to make it. So uh, he sent me some Anubis Pinto. This is similar to those other rare Anubis that I've shown you in the past. Uh, but this is a bit more common in the hobby now. It's still uh, more uncommon than any other Anubis you'll probably find at any other store uh, it is quite rare in that aspect but uh, there are much rarer types of Anubis now in the US market anyway so last but not least actually there's two bags one is a bunch of extras which I'll show you at the end we'll see what he uh, saying because I don't know um, last but not least as far as the plants that I did order was Ludwigia white so Ludwigia white is if you've been a long time viewer of the channel back when I first started selling plants, y'all know that I had this plant and this was my favorite plant. I, everybody would always ask, what's your favorite plant? Well, this was it because this has a stunning white morph to the leaves where it's not really gonna show through all that much and there looks like there might be a little hair algae. That's fine, I'm not, I'm not worried about a little hair algae. But the leaves are white and I mean, they kind of look white in the camera, at least from what I see here. They're showing little signs of green, but that's okay. Uh, but these are, oh, here's a better instance of it. Let's see if I could get it to focus. You can see there, it actually gets white and pink and it looks so much nicer in the aquarium than it does right here. Um, and he sent me a bare stem. See, like I don't mind getting a stem like this because one, it has new growth shooting out, but even if it didn't, this will grow new side shoots just like it's doing now. So uh, oftentimes people will, I, I see posts about um you know, sometimes they get stems from other people and they say, oh, it's dead. I'm like, no, that if it's firm, like if this stem is firm, which it is, and it's not mushy, that will usually grow all new plants. So um, I'm good with that. That's like a freebie right there. Uh, although I don't know how I'm gonna fit it back in the bag until I can get it planted, but we'll make do. So Ludwigia white. It's a form of Ludwigia cuba. It's a variation. I've actually seen people have it and it transitioned back into Ludwigia cuba uh, because the, the mutation sometimes isn't stable. So it's actually a mutation that makes it white. And oftentimes people get Ludwigia white in the wrong tank environment and it converts back to its original form, which was Ludwigia cuba. So last but not least, let's get into the extras here. I have no idea what's in the bag, so let's see what he sent. I, I don't remember, he might have mentioned what he was sending, but I have no idea. Oh yeah, I think he did say what he was sending. Um, so let's see. Okay, so, oh, nice. I actually just got a piece of this from uh, Beta World on Instagram, uh, Tornado Ludwigia. This, so this this is another one of my really favorite, like, favorite plants, as far as stem plants go, because it's so unique. The leaves are twisted. I don't understand what in nature would tell this plant this is the best way to grow, and it's to make your leaves spirals. But it's just stunning, and I don't understand why. It's like one of those weird things in nature that it's just like, how did this happen? So that is Ludwigia tornado or Ludwigia tornado. Uh, these are stems of Linophilia baleem, which I actually have some of, but it hasn't been doing well, so that's good that I got some more. I'm actually going to put this in the 55, see how it does there. Uh, this is, I, I butcher this name, Gratiola viticoda or something like that. So it actually has like these thorn shaped leaves. They're not like, they're not 
harmful. They're not pointy as like they, they're not going to hurt you, but they look like thorns. They're really pointy in that aspect. They look like they're sharp, but they're really cool looking stem plant. This is actually quite tall. Mine grows super short for some reason. Uh, this is, this may be regular Rotella Macondra, which I think it is. I'll, I'll throw this in, um, in the tank that I already have Rotella Macondra growing in. It's just the simple variation. No, no, um, no variegated. And then these are Sinothobeleme um, or something like that. I forget how to pronounce this one, but these I usually kill. I'm going to, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to put these in the 55. We'll see what they do. The reason why I say I'm putting all these plants in the 55, because the 55 has the best light that I have. Um, you can't get it anymore, unfortunately, but it, it just has a tremendous amount of light output. Also, I run the CO2 a bit high, higher than any of the other tanks. Cause I know like the right levels for that tank and it just does better. I, I find that all the stem plants do much better in the 55 than any other tank for some reason. And I think it's got to be the light out of anything. So, all right, guys. Well, that's about the end of the video. Let me know down in the comments below which of the plants that I showed you here today was your favorite. I, I already told you which one's my favorites and which ones I've had for quite some time that I really enjoy. But also let me know what you like. And, um, you know, leave me, leave me the comment, share, like, all that good stuff. Subscribe here if you're new. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.